what we're doing is we're just sort of rolling out some muscles, so yeah. get involved in that. Do some basic shapes. <laughs> Snakes and whatnot. Hall Train and Jason Brom now go to work putting flesh on the bones of their young T-Rex. We should probably go, we should probably go in this order. Okay, they'll all attach out here. Working initially in clay, they'll lay out all the muscles, shapes, and positions. It's not clear here whether it loops around here or whether it can just come over there. Oh, look. They begin with the legs, thighs, and tail. Speed sculpting. So right here. So it, right, it, it turns into like a little stringy bit. Yeah. How thick would these muscles be in a real T-Rex? This muscle would change profile as it gets closer. How would they connect with yeah, one another? Yeah, they come round and cross section as it goes over. Yeah, so it, it would fill up here. So it wraps around like that. Yeah. When we study muscular reconstructions on dinosaurs, we're a lot of times looking at two-dimensional drawings, but none of which give us a three-dimensional view of how those muscles work, how they how they weave in between each other and how the masses fill out. No one knows what a fully loaded T-Rex looked like under the skin. Good. So the team decides to check its work against its contemporary cousin. This emu came from a local farm. It had suffered a crippling leg injury and had to be put down but it may be able to provide the answers they need. Aided by anatomy expert Catherine Chorney, the team zeroes in on its long and muscular legs. They begin to peel back the individual muscles. Well, that's, the, that's the way that muscle comes together, right? And then, no. then okay. sever them from tendons that hold them to the bones. Yeah. You know, a lot of the action of the running is coming from the knee quite a wedge of muscle. It's almost wider than it is long, as opposed to a T-Rex, which is sort of longer than it is right. wide. Right. That'd be the muscle that does the job Hall was talking about. There is one unmistakable difference between this bird and a baby T-Rex. First of all, a T-Rex would have a very massive, very long tail, and the musculature between the leg and the tail would be much more developed than it is here. A T-Rex like its other distant relatives from the crocodile family, controlled its massive tail with huge muscles that extended out from its legs. While a croc uses its tail to propel itself through the water, a T-Rex probably used it for balance. 